Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Let me make sure my mic is okay before I get going into this. Um, I am on Facebook because, once again, goddamn YouTube. Um, but that being said, whatever. So, George Jordan is supposed to be here Wednesday at 5 p.m. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to swing that. If I'm going to find a way to do that on Facebook, either way, we'll do it. Um, look, my last report was correct. I, I, I assumed that it was Israel because it was coming out of Lebanon. The last attack that was reported, uh, came out of Lebanon and that was Israel. The reports on this is apparently also Israel. Israel has also launched more missiles into Syria, not just targeting Homs, apparently also targeting areas where Russians apparently are stationed. So this is a reporter that is stationed or that's located in Syria. The gentleman's name is right here. I should have to work out this cat. Reporter and editor of the Arab Source, HK. Several people follow him, including Max Blumenthal. So, another air defense missile was just launched. This was two hours ago. Reports of Israeli warplanes crossing the borders through Lebanon. Dumar Air Base in Damascus countryside has quite a few Russian soldiers. Sources say more than five missiles were intercepted targeting Dumar and T-4 air bases. Missiles launched by Israeli warplanes over Lebanon. This was just an hour ago. Um, just be very clear. Dumar Air Base has quite a few Russians. The reason why he's making that point that this base is quite a few Russians, whatever you want to think, if those airstrikes kill Russians, if Russia responds in a way that kills Israelis, what do you think the response of the United States is going to be in that situation? Right now, you have a situation where the United States, France, and the UK has said that a chemical strike has taken place. They've provided no evidence that a chemical strike has taken place. They've given you nothing but assertions. On the day that they were supposed to collect evidence, meaning the day or the day after, just so happened in this odd, peculiar moment, the United States, the UK, and France, those same nations that destroyed Libya where they're having open-air slave markets right now, has made a world order unto themselves and made the determination that they want to strike before any evidence was picked up by the weapons inspectors. Now lose, use your logical faculties for the moment. What makes more sense? If something had taken place and you actually want to get evidence for the thing that had taken place, you would let the independent investigators do their work. Because after all, if you are certain that a chemical weapons strike has taken place, then you are okay with the chemical weapons inspectors going there because the only thing they're going to reveal is what you yourself already know. The truth of the matter is, it makes no sense for the Syrian government to do this. The Syrian government has hemmed up over 90% of, of, of what they've wanted to hem up. They're, they're, I mean, in the, the countryside. They've effectively won this conflict, this war. The West has been paying for fighters, meaning uh, uh, terrorists, to invade that particular country. Meaning the West has tried to characterize this as a civil war. This is a civil war. This is just the people in Syria rising up to fight back. Completely and always omitting the fact that Syria has been invaded by people from essentially the UK. And France, meaning money and resources have been going to terrorists in the region of the world in order to undermine the Syrian government, including the Saudi government. The United States has stuck arm in arm with the Saudi government, even though these guys, Hillary Clinton herself and WikiLeaks say, support terrorism throughout the region of the globe. For all of Donald Trump's protestations about coming into that office, he is assiduously stuck with Saudis, which means that he himself is essentially helping the terrorists while at the same token screaming at the top of his lungs that he's fighting ISIS and he's trying to fight the terrorists. What makes more sense? Bashar al-Assad has cleared 90% of his area, or more than 90% of terrorists. He has effectively won this war. His government is relatively stable. Russia is propping him up. He has everything he wanted. But he's such an animal, he's such a maniac, that despite having, for all intents and purposes, the majority of what he wants in this, he is going to say fuck all and he is going to release a chemical weapons 
knowing full well that the West is looking for any pretext that they can find to attack and undermine that government and take them out that seat. Do you understand that that during analysis, when they were doing studies about how ISIS got a hold of their weapons, they found that more weapons, ISIS had access to more weapons than they would get from battlefield conditions. Finding that the United States and Saudi Arabia was funneling weapons and resources not just to the quote-unquote free Syrian army, which is bullshit in and of itself, is propaganda, but to everybody. They wanted him out that seat so much that they were giving money and munitions to everybody, including the British government, by the way. The same British government that's trying to say that Russia somehow poisoned their spy. I guess I'm asking what makes more sense. You have terrorists who are in a region of the world who are trying to topple the Saud government. The United States calls them the Free Syrian Army, the moderates, which is absolutely Orwellian. These guys are radical Islamic extremists that are trying to implement Sharia law in Syria and try to topple that government. I understand that Bashar al-Assad is a bad guy, but him being a bad guy is fine and besides the point. Whether or not he dropped the chemical weapons is, is, is the point. That's the argument that they're making. And I guess I'm making the point that that makes no sense. He has everything that he wants. He's effectively won this war. And for whatever reason, he says, fuck all. I'm just a maniac. I'm just a monster. I'm just a madman. And I just want to invite Western powers to have a pretext to attack me. So I'm going to drop a chemical weapon that I don't need to drop. Or does it make more sense that the terrorists themselves, the people who are trying to topple the government, who are trying to undermine that government, the people that the United States and the Britain and Western powers have given resources and munitions to to try to topple the government, does it make more sense that them facing oblivion, because that's what they're facing, they're going to get killed, all of them, they're going to lose. Facing oblivion, they say, we have nothing else to lose, and we are either going to stage or actually put a chemical weapon strike. Knowing full well, that this would allow the Western powers pretext to get involved larger into a larger role into the conflict. The oblivion makes more sense. The media is pushing a narrative that literally makes no sense. They're trying to get you to believe that the guy is such a maniac and such a madman that he cares less about the integrity, meaning his integrity in that office. He cares less about his strategic interests than he does with, for whatever reason, gassing people that he doesn't need to gas. I'm just saying it makes no sense. Their narrative makes no sense. And now it just so happens the weapons people who are supposed to be there, they strike the OC. They strike in those areas at the last minute, just before the weapons people are supposed to go in order to inspect for chemical weapons. I'm just saying that story sounds hokey. The story that the mainstream media sounds is hokey. These guys have been a bloody war and a bloody conflict for the past God knows how many years. And I'm supposed to believe that they're not going to react to facing oblivion, that they're not going to react to facing losses. Come on. Come on. They're selling you a bill of goods. And now these guys are striking without any evidence at all. Zero evidence they've shown you nothing they're giving you nothing they've taken social media I, I shit you not they've taken social media and the word of terrorists and organizations that they themselves have funded meaning the united states and britain as, as their word in order to do these strikes israel being the united states lapdog in this particular region the enforcer in this region of the world they know goddamn well that if the united states strikes in some of these other places Russia will respond Israel is a proxy to the United States action is that reason in that region of the world. My mouth's slippery. That's what's taking place. Now, whether the United States has talked to Israel or whether Israel is taking action on their own, it's kind of besides the point. Israel, in many respects, is acting as the United States proxy in this region of the world. And have no doubt, if Israel kills Russian soldiers, Russia will look at them as such. And if Russia responds, what is the mechanistic perspective of the United States. And I say mechanistic because at that point, it doesn't matter what the individual in the office does. They will be screaming for action, screaming for something to take place. And I would wager that Donald Trump is not going to stand against those screams. They are inching you closer and closer into oblivion. And what they're using to inch you closer and closer to oblivion is nonsense. It's nonsense. 
The story that they're going back with, going back to 2013 when Obama made the decision or, or, or trying to make the decision whether or not to do strikes because he called it a red line. Do you understand that the terrorists themselves had access to those weapons? New York Times, don't take my word for it, article after article. The New York Times even had the article saying that the terrorists themselves had access to those weapons, to those, uh, to, to those chemical weapons. Seymour Hirsch, same thing. The terrorist has access to those chemical weapons. The chemical weapons inspector themselves in 2013, when they went out to check, came to the same conclusion that it was most likely the terrorists, not Assad. The United States didn't care about this. They didn't care about this at all. The media didn't give a contrary opinion. In fact, they wouldn't even publish Seymour Hersh's story in the United States. They had to publish it in Germany or uh, London, one or the other. I'm making a point to you that they are lying to you. They're selling you a bill of goods. The narrative that they're using for the chemical weapons strike goes all the way back to 2013. Meaning they didn't even verify whether it was a Syrian government back in 2013. And yet they use every other narrative about chemical weapons to go back to that particular point. When Donald Trump got into office in 2017 and he struck Syria. Oh my God, there's a gas attack. Dead babies. Dead babies. And he strikes. He hits Syria. A year later, they asked Mathis, hey, how do you know it was Syria? Mathis says, we have no idea. We don't know whether it was Syria or not. Well, that's problematic. You attacked a country. You don't necessarily know whether or not the country did what you attacked them for. And beyond whether or not you attacked them for, what is the legal basis that you used to attack them? Even if everything you said is true, what is the legal basis? You have no legal basis to be in Syria, let alone to attack Syria. None. Zero. And yet the United States still engaged in that particular behavior. Fair enough. In this case, this is Israel. Israel has taken time away from murdering Palestinians, again, illegally committing war crimes, to now, again, breaking international law and attacking a country. And it doesn't even, it can't even verify that they're attacking the country for that particular reason. Meaning they can't even verify that it was a chemical weapons attack. They don't know. What I'm getting to you is they are inching you closer and closer to oblivion. That's what I'm getting to you. Whether that's Israel and Israel, again, I would make the argument as a proxy for United States action in that region of the world. They're inching us closer to oblivion. Do you know there are Russians, if, if, if they're indeed, if this guy's right, and there are Russian soldiers in that area, if they hit a Russian soldier tonight in this attack, what do you think Russia's response will be? What do you think Russia's response should be? Between everybody in this mix, Russia is in alignment with Syria. There's nothing wrong with them being in alignment. They have allies just like we have allies. They're allies. The United States is an ally of, of Israel in addition to Saudi Arabia, Britain, France, etc., etc. If in pursuit of the illegal action that Israel is taking, this grossly and flagrant illegal action that they're taking right now, if in pursuit of this illegal action, they kill Russian soldiers. Any action that takes place against Israel will by definition drag in the United States. Not because I wanted to, but because it will. Everybody knows it will. What would be the hyperbolic reaction that the United States would take to some of this, considering some of the hawks and assholes and dumbasses that we have in Congress right now? I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I'm just making the point that right now, Israel has made the determination, whether by themselves or whether with the approval of the United States, to attack to attack Syria, the same Syria that is in association with Russia. And fact is, they have nothing evidence-wise to make this case. And even if they did have evidence to make this case, let me say it this way. Even if you did have evidence to do it, are there other ways to achieve the ends that you want to achieve? Fact is, though, there's no point even talking at that point because they haven't gotten evidence on it. Russia has made the point that nothing has taken place. Nothing has taken place. You have not made your case. In fact, when the people came to test it, you guys decided to bomb. So until I see evidence, I don't believe it. There's no reason to believe it. None of this stuff makes sense. Assad is just an animal and a maniac. And even when he wins the war, he just gasses his own people for shits and giggles. Sure.
regardless of what's true or not. These guys, if they hit any Russians, we're in a fuck fest. So, I will leave it at that. We are in a world of shit and piss, and it is about to get nastier. Um, stay tuned. OPCW is apparently testing that stuff, and if they come back and say there is no results or no... Russia is making the argument that it has to take place. This is a hoax. That that this wasn't a chemical weapon strike at all. In fact, the article I was about to do was going into that before this first came up. That they're saying this is a hoax. We have irrefutable proof that this never took place. If that's true, and you find out that all of these people are bombing in order to cover up evidence as opposed to actually punish... I'll just say this is getting interesting and to stay tuned. I'll say this is getting interesting and to stay tuned. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. And, of course, you can always support through Patreon. Thanks, everyone.